is going on everybody <laughs> welcome back to a late and yet another episode of hanging heavy normally i record and post these on friday or saturday trying to be uh, consistent but i had a friend over this past weekend he's a close friend uh, one would say even one of my best friends <clears throat> He's been on the show before, and uh, that's none other than the lovely Carhart. Um, so yeah, I was gonna record with him, but you know, we started playing games, and we were drinking and sucking. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I just wanted to enjoy his company at the moment in in time. You know, I rarely see him, so. It was good just to fuck around, shoot the shit, without having to perform, so to speak. <clears throat> so I apologize, it's going up a couple days later than normal, but a hey, better late than never. And uh, <clears throat> I guess I'm gonna, as I'm trying to keep a, take the veil off the industry, so to speak, you know, keep the transparency with uh, the people that do consistently listen, whether you know me personally or not. Um, that's really not important. Uh, thank you for coming back to another episode. Uh, I'm your boy Desecrator, and let's get it rolling. Let's let's go off some geographic stats for the listeners of Hanging Heavy Podcast, where the conversation can get as heavy as the host. So. In typical fashion, uh, United States, my country of origin, obviously, uh, reigns supreme with listens at 37.5% with 12 downloads. 12% coming up strong and next are my cousins and brothers from the Great White North, and that is Canada with 12.5%, 4 downloads. Surprisingly, I've got a lot more listeners this time. I don't know what's doing it. Hopefully, you guys are spreading the word, putting this uh, podcast up on your social media. If I entertain, if I tickle that pickle, if I uh, tickle that earwig, uh, uh, that's not the saying, but fuck you. <laughs> so, yeah, I got two listens from Australia, two from Germany, two from the United Kingdom, two from Italy, one from Bulgaria, one from Brazil, one from Colombia, one from Malaysia. I hope my airplane doesn't go missing. Ooh, too soon? Sorry. <laughs> uh, one from Norway, one from New Zealand, one from Qatar, and one from Turkey. Hopefully all those ones are not accidental slip-ups because most of these downloads are coming from Spotify, with 60% of it coming from Spotify. 16% of that, Apple Podcasts. 9% is coming from the Podbean app. So if you don't have the Podbean app already, it makes listening to the show a whole lot easier. You automatically get notified when I upload or when any news or posts get added. You can like, share, comment, uh, subscribe. You can uh, share this. Uh, or, excuse me, I already said that. I'm an asshole. You can uh, find other podcasts if you're interested. Unless you're only listening to the greatest fucking show on the internet. Hanging heavy. Um, yeah, if not, I don't get statistics for YouTube, so YouTube is another one. Uh, if you don't want to use any of the other bullshit that I mentioned, it's also on the Google Play Store. And yeah, you can search on YouTube, Hanging Heavy Podcast, and you'll find every single upload. And if not, you can always go to the website, hangingheavy.podbean.com. Podbean is so generous to allow me to have a website hosted by them, so... There's a bunch of ways to listen, and uh, I recommend you check it out. So, I guess with those statistics out of the way... Ooh, hold on. Let me shout out some of my United States people. Let me shout out the North Americans. <clears throat> Let me go exactly. I have three downloads from California, two from Texas. What the fuck, Texas? One download from my Misha Gangsters. One from North Carolina, one from New Mexico, one from Nevada, one from Ohio, and two from others. 
again, Podbean, what the fuck does that mean? And I guess I'll shout out my uh, snowy white friends. They shouldn't, I shouldn't say that, they're probably not white. Uh, my snowy friends from the north. I got one download from the Quebec area and one from the Ontario area. I don't know exactly where, it just gives me the general area. One other, <laughs> of course. Of course, there's other also in fucking Canada. You know what? Fuck it. Let's just go worldwide. From Australia, I got two downloads from Queensland. Don't know where that is. Never been. But uh, thanks. Oh, oh, oh. I'm a popular boy. <clears throat> Let's go with my most popular episode now. It's Twink. Twinkle, twinkle, little stars. With 12 downloads, knocking out my previous number one downloaded episode, which was Spooky Scary Skeletons. Yeah, Twinkle Twinkle Little Stars was uh, Poppy's friends. Uh, They came over and we had uh, an interesting conversation. But coming in the number two spot is Fuck My Shit Up, Fam. (laughs) Yeah, that was last week's episode. And, um, yeah. (laughs) <clears throat> so moving on, let's. Whoops, uh, uh, let's move in to uh, little science, bitch. Uh, so I covered a story some time back in my world of world science. World of science, science. bitch. Science don't remember when exactly (laughs) but I covered a woman that had successfully had a uterus transplant that allowed her to carry a child well uh, since since the times passed she's officially been the first woman in the United States United States States. now that isn't the first patient to have this success but it is in the American American case case in this ongoing study of science in the science community, also known as the world of science. World of science. Now, this has happened before, but this is the first time it happened in America. So, it doesn't make her the first person ever, but it's still a, a wonderful feat, I guess, to say, fuck you, God. How dare you say I can't have kids? Yeah, this is where I kind of... Should we be doing this? Fucking conundrum of science, you know? People have their feelings towards it. Uh, If it makes you happy, fucking do it. But don't fucking ruin civilization as we know it. Fucking with things we know not... That we know not things or answers to. Completely. You know? Catch my drift? Like, I don't want this bitch to have the first super child that will fucking bring the end of humanity as you know it because she wanted to have a fucking kid. It's kind of selfish. But whatever. I'm a man. I shoot kids uh, into an empty sock. (laughs) Potentially millions of children die every day. If you catch my drift. My laundry is like a genocide. (laughs) So, recently I went to the dollar store. Won't say which one, because it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> anyway, I was uh, getting a birthday day, uh, <laughs> a birthday card for my father with my son. While we were walking out, I noticed an uh, older gentleman with a crutch. Ah. Here we go again with the fucking single crutch bullshit. Anyway. (laughs) If you know, you know. He was trying to talk to people as they came out. Instinctively, this points to them being homeless or asking for money in some capacity. And sometimes people can be extremely rude to these kind of people. So I wanted to see what his story was. I could have told him to just fuck off, but I didn't. I listened to his story, and then he asked me for $5. Now, 
I didn't have any cash on me at the time, so I told him I'd love to help, but I only had credit. Um, this, I guess, triggered something in his mind, and he thought about it for a second. And he said, well, do you think you can still help me out with your card? Just to get me some essentials? And you know what? I said, fuck it. Can't use anything here to get drugs anyway, so why not? Well, he walked in to the store and he walked into the area where they sell candles. <clears throat> he picked up a single pack of two candlesticks packaged together. He asked if he could take two packages. I said, sure. They were a dollar a piece, so fine. He then walks over to the dog food aisle and asks if he can take three small dollar boxes of dry kibble for his three dogs. That didn't seem strange, and it kind of seemed sad, seeing how hot it is here. So, I said, alright. And now he walks to the food aisle, and this is where I was like, okay, now now we're talking, right? And he asks if he can take some packages of hot dogs. And I said, sure, take a couple. He then reached for these small cartons of milk. A little bit bigger than what you would get from a school lunch all those years ago. He took three and said, well, that's all I can bother you for. For me, seeing that that's not much, and either way, it's all a dollar. Uh, I said, okay. So we walked up, and it came out to about $10 and change. I paid for it, and he looked at me with such a sincere look in his eyes. And when he reached to shake my hand, he thanked me for helping him. And I said, hey, man, it's not much, but if it helps, then I'm glad to have helped you. It's not a problem. And we parted ways. He walked away, I walked away. But as we were walking away, I explained to my son that not everyone has what they want. Some people don't even have enough money for food. There's a lot of people that need help and less people willing to help. So I told him what we did, what we just did, was help somebody in need, and that's always a good thing. He seemed to understand the notion, but seeing as he's seven, hopefully this lesson will sink into him in the long run. He's always good with sharing, and I don't want him to grow up to be a selfish piece of shit. I was raised with the ideology of, I have enough to share, then let's fucking go. It's getting harder and harder these days to find a, a way to instill good into kids with how l less and less connected we become with the advance of the advancement of technology. So uh, it, I felt it was a good hands-on personalized experience for him to learn that, hey, don't be a bitch. If you have some money or some extra money, share it. There's some people that need the help. And for those people that usually just say oh no 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 thanks no uh, to people that are in need fuck you man it's hard on these streets dog i know you can't fucking give every person that's asking for money money but every once in a while give up some fucking scratch dude in the long run you look like a better person you'll feel better about yourself and somebody may have that one thing they needed to keep themselves going you know it's not about fucking always being the biggest dick swinging, you know? <clears throat> I, I, I don't know. <sighs> so, yeah, like I said, I was playing uh, Call of Cthulhu with my boy Carhartt. And I've come to the realization that that game's not really that good. <laughs> I mean, I'm not too far into it, but it's uh, not very action-packed. For it being uh, about Cthulhu or some mythos generated by inspiration or whatever you want to call it from H.P. Lovecraft, this game is pretty boring. Now... I I have a feeling that it'll take a couple of hours of gameplay to get interesting. 
I'm probably only an hour into it. So, uh, maybe one day I'll finish it. Maybe not. <clears throat> but, you know, uh, video games are kind of hard. Fuck, uh, Red Dead Redemption has been out for so fucking long. I still haven't even finished that game. I know what happens. I know how it ends. I've played the first Red Dead Redemption, so no shit I know fucking what characters make it through and what characters don't. They kind of don't even mention the main character in this in this game, but that's neither here nor there. Context clues, motherfucker. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess we'll talk a little bit more about video games. <clears throat> so I guess I'll just uh, go over some news on video games that I found interesting. Now this is coming from technologyreview.com. It's an article titled, Video Games Don't Depress Teens As Much As Other Screen Time. And uh, from what it says, it says social media use and TV time have been connected in depression in tweens and teens for a while now. But new findings suggest not all screen time is a downer. Uh, let's read how researchers studied 3,826 adolescents entering 7th grade, almost evenly split between boys and girls, over the course of four years in the greater Montreal area. Well, look at that. Shout out to my brothers and sisters in the Great White North. The study was led by Patricia Conrad at the Université de Montreal. Excuse my French. <laughs> Pardon my French, and uh, published in JAMA, J-A-M-A, whatever that means. Look into it. And it looked at how self-reports of depressive behavior correlated with using four screen types. Computer, social media, television, and video games. So, yeah surprising about the study is that it isolates video games as one of the form of screen times that is neutral in its effects on teen depression. That could be because video games don't often depict teens or people, Conrad said. Social media and television, on the other hand, may be associated with drops in self-esteem because of what Conrad called images of idealized lives, which leads kids to compare themselves with the glossy, filtered, unrealistic images they've shown. Conrad and her team also found no evidence that screen time affected weekly physical activity. This suggested to us that the relationship between television and social media on depression was mediated through content and thoughts rather than physical activity, she said. Uh, they asked, is there any type of screen time that is positive? And according to Conrad, that's a no. So this research is still got leaps and bounds to get ahead but demographics whether gender socioeconomics and previous health factors might play a role in depression besides screen time need to be looked at more closely said conrad researchers also haven't yet fully figured out what exactly it is about screen time that caused depression is it a specific type of image are there certain type of behaviors that put people at risk they need to find these answers to the questions that matter before they can actually say that oh it's scientifically fact so I mean that's cool right you're not gonna get a uh, you're not gonna get depressed from video games so yeah okay so this other one comes from the Jakarta post the Jakarta a post Jakarta post the Jakarta post Oh, I'm an asshole that can't read one long word sentence. <coughs> and the article, simply titled, Video Games Can Boost Creativity. It, video games have become an inseparable part of our lives, even though we may not play ourselves. People around us certainly do. And while playing video games in moderation can be a good way to relax and create social interaction... Excessive playing has negative effects. 
So a recent study conducted by the Iowa State University revealed that playing video games under certain conditions is linked to improved creativity. And I'm going to go ahead and point out that the image that they have in this uh, article is a picture of toys from the Minecraft line. It's a Minecraft Steve laying on a Minecraft bed next to a Minecraft chest and a Minecraft crafting table. <laughs> so yeah, in the study, 352 participants were asked to play or watch TV for 40 minutes and then do a number of creativity testing tasks. One of the tests was to draw a creature that differed so much from those roaming the earth. The more human-like the creature depicted, the lower the score. The participants who played Minecraft, a game that invites players to explore more unique worlds and build imaginative creations, were divided into two groups, one of which was instructed to play as creatively as possible. Apparently, the group instructed to play Minecraft creatively scored lowest in the creativity test that followed the play. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, yeah, so... There's pointed out that the plausible reason as to why creative mind players perform worse in the ensuing creative test is that the creativity may have actually limited the player's options in the game, hence making the experience less creative. What the fuck? It's also positive, possible that they use all of their quote-unquote creative juices <laughs> while playing and had nothing left when it came time to complete the test, which makes more sense to me. You're burned out from being creative. Bray. Yeah, okay, let's skip on Minecraft. Speaking of that, I, I have to go play Minecraft with my son after this, so... Yeah, maybe I'll be creatively juiced out. <laughs> Get all my juices! <laughs> so this is where playing video games is getting into more of a, a scientific realm that I would like to read more about. And this article is from SciPost.org, and it is simply titled, Playing Physically Interactive Video Games is Associated with Lucid Dreaming. <clears throat> now, I'm just going to read it verbatim. New research indicates that a certain type of gaming is associated with experiencing lucid dreams, in which the dreamer is aware they're dreaming while it's still happening. Sometimes people who are lucid dreaming can even play an active role in their dreams. An experience known as controlling dreaming. Well, no shit, that's literally what you're doing. Okay. So this asshole, Mark Sestier, at the University of Central Arkansas, uh, became interested in the connection between video game and lucid dreaming. Thanks to Pescat's student, Mai Tai, Ming Tai, a gamer herself and co-author of the new study. So, they researched and surveyed 297 undergraduate students regarding their dreams and gaming behavior. Gameplay in general was unrelated to lucid dreaming. However, the researchers found that a particular type of gaming, physically interactive games such as Nintendo's Wii system or Microsoft's Kinect, not a sponsor, <laughs> were both associated with lucid dreaming and controlled dreaming frequency. In other words, Students who reported playing physically interactive games more often tended to also report experiencing lucid and controlled dreams more often. So that's as far as I'm going to read into that because uh, I don't want them to come after me for stealing their content. But that sounds pretty fucking interesting. So I wonder if people that have these VR games and these VR setups to where they're literally controlling the characters have any connection to this lucid dreaming. <clears throat> That's fucking crazy. I mean, just owning a fucking VR setup is crazy enough. You get to control your dreams too? That's not fair. <laughs> uh, I was gonna bring up how the US Army is now recruiting with video games, but I don't care. But yeah, let, let me read this last article about video games and I'll get the fuck out of your face with it. Fucking pop-ups, man. So this website, you may have heard of it. It's uh, Forbes.com. One day maybe be a sponsor. 
<laughs> but this article was posted July 15th, which is today, Monday. And it says Prime Day 2019, the best video game deals on PS4 and Xbox One on Amazon. So for sale for the PS4, let's start off with The Division. The Division 2 is Ubisoft's follow-up to the wildly popular The Division 1. <laughs> no shit. It's 20 doll hairs right now. So if you're looking to gang up and fuck a bunch of terrorists, get your bull. The next big title, also from Ubisoft. What the fuck, Ubisoft? Uh, Of course. (laughs) It's uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and this is their uh, most expansive, detailed, sprawling adventure yet in the long running Assassin's Creed franchise. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Odyssey, I haven't played. I haven't even played the fucking one in Egypt. Uh, I guess I'm a fake fan. I played uh, one through three, and I hated three. So, Black Flag was also uh, pretty lame as well. <laughs> but look at this: the, how the mighty have fallen. Anthem Legion of Dawn Edition is going for a measly fifteen fucking dollars. Fuck you, EA. Way to ruin a decent looking game with your greedy fucking fingers. You can shove them in your bum. (coughs) I should cut that out, but I'm not going to. So, Destiny 2 Forsaken. Destiny 2 is going free to play, but if you want any content past the basic game, you'll need to buy Forsaken. Which you can get during Prime Day for just $20. This opens up the world of Destiny 2 and gives you tons of content including expansions, countless hours of gameplay. And if you get hooked on the glorious gunplay, Bungie Space Opera, which is likely, you'll have plenty to look forward to when Shadow Keep launches later this year. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Fuck you, Destiny. It's about time you're fucking going free to play, even though you still gotta buy expansions. Oh, we're gonna not do what Activision wants, and we're not gonna charge our players, but we're gonna charge our players anyway. <laughs> but we're doing good! Fuck you. <laughs> Love hate relationship, Destiny. Anyway, Kingdom Hearts 3 is going $20. A plague of innocence. A plague tale. Innocence. I have never heard of it. But it's going on sale for $35. For all you Devil May Cry fans, Devil May Cry 5 is going on sale for $40, saving $20 during Prime Day. Apparently this was really good. I haven't played a Devil May Cry in a long time. But yeah, they say it's really good. Uh, Far Cry New Dawn. Uh, apparently this is going on sale. It's a direct sequel to Far Cry 5, which I have and haven't finished. But it's pretty fun as it is. And currently this is $20. It's 50% off its original price, so snag it up. Uh, the remake, Resident Evil 2, is on sale. Uh, you can grab it for $22. Or, ex- excuse me, you can grab it for $38, saving $22. And that's what you get for PS4. I would go to the Xbox, but you know what? Fuck you, Xbox players. <laughs> no, it's just a, it's another article, and I don't want to give Forbes more clicks. They make enough money as it is. <coughs> Excuse me. So, my son keeps bugging me about fucking playing Minecraft with him, so I guess I'll cut the episode there. Uh, It's long enough already. (laughs) I wish I could hear that one time. (laughs) Uh, eh, You hear it once. That's all you need to hear it. (laughs) Um, But yeah... I appreciate you, those that listen, those that stay tuned, those that come back for more, those that have spread the word and the love that is Hanging Heavy Podcast. Much is appreciated. I don't have a Snapchat, Papi. I don't have Facebook. I don't have uh, Twitter. 
I don't have Tumblr. I don't have fucking Instagram. You know what? That's my fault. But at the same time, do I really want to give up? Ah, what the fuck? I'm just an asshole. I don't feel like doing any of that bullshit. It takes too much time. I wish I had a creative team to get on that for me. But you know what? I don't. Because this show goes for free. Or fuck. This show is in the negative, actually. I think I've lost more money on this show than I've ever, I'll ever earn on it. <laughs> and you know what? That's okay because I enjoy doing it. As always, I'm your boy Desecrator. You know where to find the show. And uh, like I said, spread the love on your social media. Lord knows when I'll fucking get one. But uh, as always, I'm your boy Desecrator. You've just tuned in to Hanging Heavy. And... Much love, Rachel Wynn.